All right, everybody, we've got our iPhone right here seated in the middle once again, because that is the way we are always going to start. We've got our camera set up as well, but we need to make sure that it gets a little bit closer. So I'm going to press GCZ and bring it upwards all the way over here. And you know what? I think we can change the focal length for this. So I'm going to set it to 80 millimeters once again. I simply like working with 80 millimeters. I think it's fine. For the iPhone itself, we should rotate it around. So RC 180 on our MT. And right now it looks like this. But this is very flat looking because it is facing towards the camera exactly. So we gotta press R and Z and make sure that we get a little bit of that depth effect going on right there. And you know what? I'm going to press I. And uh, right here we already got our animation set up. I'm going to make this 100 frames, which is approximately 4 seconds. So I'm going to set it to 100. Perhaps what we want to do is rotate this to the other side but it shouldn't go outside of the screen. And that is going to be a problem. So basically what we want to do, we either want to rotate this and move the camera, or we want to rotate this and move the phone itself. I think it's easier to animate the camera as well. So let's go ahead and RZ and let's turn it all the way to this side, press I. And this is the awesome looking animation that we've just created. And it's going around, it's not really interesting as of yet, but it will be once we have our graph editor animation done for this. But I made one small mistake and you know what? This happens sometimes as a 3D artist, but everything can be solved. All problems are always solvable and that is the meaning of life, isn't it guys? So the thing that I kind of messed up is that we should have parented the text to this empty already. Now we gotta make sure that do it in a different manner. But I'm going to add a text right here, shift A, text. And I am going to type and enter night, enter mode. And I will choose a different font. So right over here on the big letter A, you can go to font, open this folder, and it might seem like you don't have any fonts, but actually there's many of them. So I'm going to type Arial, Arial narrow bold for now, but I don't want the line spacing to be this much. So we gotta go down and right over here under paragraph, you can see spacing and we can either space the characters, which is something like this. We can also space the words, but we don't have any words right beside each other and the lines, which is what we're going to be doing right now. So I'm going to set the lines to something like this and bring them all a bit closer together. And we also want to give this some geometry. So I'm going to the geometry right over here and extrude it just a little bit. And now it is actually 3D. Very cool, very cool. All right, so how are we going to get this aligned to the telephone? There's multiple ways, but actually you can just rotate it around, fiddle around with it until you get it right. But that is not the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going into the objects constraint tab and I will select this one and I'll select copy transforms. And with copy transforms, we can select our target, which is going to be the empty itself. Now it is aligning with this empty and the rotation and all the good stuff. It's not necessarily on the position that we want it to be and we can't move it around anymore because it is fixed to this empty, but we have come a long way without fiddling it around with anything. So I'm just going to apply the transform. So control A, apply those transforms. Then I'm going to press RXX 90, make sure it's standing up straight. RZ 180, because we want to have it on the other side. And then I'm going to scale this down, G and Z, and let's see GZC, and bring it right over here. Uh, make sure that it fits. And now it is actually perfectly aligned to this telephone. What are we going to do next? We are going to select our empty, control P, and we want to keep the transform because we made some transformations. So object, keep transform. And now if we move this empty around, the text will actually stick to the back of our telephone, which is exactly what we want. Now for this text itself, what we need to do is give it a texture because it doesn't have a texture as of yet. So let's go over into this mode right now. Now you can see the iPhone has a beautiful looking texture but this one doesn't really. And what we want to do is simply add a gradient color. And why a gradient color? Because having a flat tone like this really doesn't cut it for me. So what we are going to do is bring in a gradient texture and I'm going to plug the color into the base color and I will actually bring in a color ramp in between. And as you can see, it is already making this fading line that we can animate. We are not going to animate it, but it's already looking a bit more luxurious if you ask me. So I'm going to make this a darker orange color. So probably like brownish. I'm going to make this a light orange color, something like this. And then we have to play around with the settings, make sure that we get something that we like, but it just gives it a little bit extra if we use a gradient, just makes it a little bit better. Now, the next thing that we want to do is to add an area lamp. 
area lamp right over here. I'm going to bring this upwards and we have to take our text, which is hidden within the empty right now because we parented it to the empty. The text, uh, we go to the area lamp, go over to the object properties tab, do shading, light linking plus, and drag in our text in this little box right here. Now we've done this a lot during this course, so if that went a little bit quick for you, go ahead and watch the other parts as well. Uh, and now basically this light only works on this text, so we don't get very rough reflections on this telephone. It only works on the text, which means that we can play around with our lighting some more. But before we do that, let's first make sure that our animation is looking fine and dandy. So I'm going into the object materials tab, so I'm going into the materials tab and right here we have the screen LED. You can see it is not connected and you know what? I'm going to delete it anyway. I'm going to bring in an image sequence, image sequence, and I will bring in a video that I made with my own iPhone. I, it is an iPhone 11, uh, but I'm going to use that screen recording in order to have a slight animation on the screen. And we are going to use that then to transition over to the other shot. So, and by default, it's going to set image sequence, but it's not an image sequence, it's actually an MP4. So I'm going to set it to movie and vector into the vector, color into the color and color into the color of the emission and increase the strength. And there you have it, the screen is returning to life. And this is not the correct frame that I want this to be starting on. So now let's make sure that this MP4 is playing from the right part of this. So let's see, we've got one frame, it's saying one frame, but actually it's a lot more frames. So let's bring up our timeline right over here. Bring this to timeline. And if we scroll through this, you can actually see that the screen is not changing at all. As a matter of fact, we need to give this some more frames. So I'm going to increase this. So we have to change the offset to, well, let's say zero for now. And let's see what is happening. We actually get some screen imagery right here. Let's set it back to frame zero, by the way, and just have a look at what it is doing. Uh, I recorded outside of my window and uh, well, this is what it looks like. I actually want this thing to animate from three to four or from four to three, doesn't really matter, maybe to five. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this empty because in the beginning, I do not want this iPhone to move. I actually want it to start moving after this animation is done. So I'm going to take this and I will set it to frame 24-ish, 25, 24. Right now it's on frame 24, so it's not doing anything right now. And then as this animation completes, then it's going to turn around and we see night mode right over there. So let's go ahead and make sure that this entire text in the shader editor is located at the correct position. So I'm going to set it to cyclic and auto refresh. And now we have to offset this by a whole lot in order to get to the right position, which is right over here, I can see three seconds, and now it's set to four seconds, exactly the way that we wanted to. So I'm going to keep it like that and play it off. It will change to four seconds, then it will turn around and we see night mode right over there. Now, of course, this doesn't look very appealing. So the way to change that is actually to bring in a HDRI that is uh, made for the night. So I'm going to press on N, bring in AEC HDRI. I'm going to set this to Shanghai Bund. And I do believe that Shanghai Bund is one of the best night HDRIs that you can get because it's giving you a lot of these cool looking purple reflections. And I actually like that a lot. But it's way too strong, so I'm going to set it to 0.1. Once again, make sure that it's a whole lot darker. Right now, this is what it looks like. Of course, we've got some people in the background here that doesn't look very appealing. So what we can do is rotate this HDRI around. Now, if you don't have this, you can also go over here from object to world, and then you have the mapping node right here. Or if you don't, add in a mapping node and a generated texture coordinate and rotate Z right over there. So if you can rotate this, make sure that you have some pretty cool looking lighting that is going to look interesting in the background. Something like this might do the trick. What I'm going to do now is make sure that this animation is the way that we want it to look. So I'm going into the timeline, I'm going to drag that upwards, control tab to go over into the graph editor, and let's open this up. Because the only animation that we've got is on the Z rotation. There's not really that much that we can do in order to make this better. So let's close everything off except for the Z U the rotation, A and dot, and make sure that we are looking at this right now. So basically what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is going quite slow, then it's speeding up right over here, and then it's slowing down right over here. So what would that curve look like? Well, actually it's going very slowly at first, and then it will be very steep, and then it will die out slowly again. And the way to do it is actually by selecting both of these, 
setting the pivot point, because we have a pivot point in the graph editor as well, individual centers. Now from individual centers, we can press S and X because we only want to scale it horizontally right over there. And as you can see, we are getting this S curve, which is slow in the beginning then very fast because in a short amount of time, we reach a very steep hill and then it's going to drag out and be a whole lot slower once again. So let's see what this looks like. Yeah, okay, so not fast enough, but we can always increase the speed of this by scaling it up. There you go. This could be a bit faster. So right over here, I'm going to drag this right handle and slowly, then it's moving fast. So it should be a whole lot faster over here as well. There you go. Now, the only thing we need to do is to take our camera so let's go over to the timeline, uh, take the camera, and at the moment that this starts rotating, which is from frame 24, I want to place a keyframe on the camera, and right over here, uh, this should actually be a bit more to the side. So let's see, maybe on frame 80 already, we can bring this to the side like this. Press I. And you don't even notice that the camera is moving like this. I don't even think we have to do anything in the graph editor. This already looks pretty good. So the only thing left to do is basically to give this some cool looking colors to maybe give it a little bit of a bokeh and then this render will be done. We can simply render it out using, of course, motion blur. So let's go over here and make sure that our lighting looks correct. So let's go into the camera, go to the camera right over here, depth of field, turn it on. Let's add a empty that we can use as the depth of field measurement. I'm going to add an empty, let's say, arrows, because it is a bit more visible. Then I'm going to select the camera and select the, whoa, 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 no, oh, come on, empty. So right now we've got the empty selected, which is this one, and the depth of field should be based on this empty. So if we go into the camera, let's increase our passepartout right over there, and let's decrease the f-stop. Now, the iPhone should be pretty sharp and visible, while this part is going to be a whole lot uh, more bokeh type effect. And you can choose whatever location you want in Shanghai Bund in order to make this look exactly the way that you want it to. I think somewhere over here looks pretty cool, and I'm just going to roll with it. Now, another thing that we can do, of course, is go back to the area lab that we created earlier in order to make sure that our text effect, which is right over here, looks a bit cooler. So I'm going to increase the power of this and maybe, you know, light night mode should be yellow. I don't know. We can try, right? We can always try. So let's make it yellow real quickly. And night mode. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Of course, there is one more thing that we can do and that is adding an extra area lamp. So we can add an extra area lamp right over here. Bring it right over there and increase the power and maybe that's just that little something extra that we need in order to make this a good looking shot so turn it off turn it on maybe from the side something like this that does look pretty cool if you ask me and it kind of makes sense with this white light as well uh, actually i do think that the bokeh is a bit too strong here so the last thing to do would be to take our empty that is going to determine the focal point the focus point somewhere over here it is fine for this final shot, so in frame 80. But somewhere over here, on frame 24, it should be a little bit more towards this side, a bit upwards, and make sure that it is located exactly on that yellow part right over there. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to select this area lamp because I don't like the fact that it's already looking so shiny from over here way too early. So I'm going to frame 80, press I, because that's definitely where I want that area lamp to be. And on frame 24, let's maybe uh, bring it upwards. And we get a slight area lamp reflection right over there, but it's not too much. And that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you learned a thing or two about animation, about parenting, copying locations, and adding some lighting that looks very cool and cinematic. And later on, we are going to make this animation. So be sure to stick around and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.